Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're gonna do a little bit deeper dive on relays. I've mentioned using them in the past, but we're gonna get a little more in depth with them this week. So let's check it out. So first and foremost with relays, there are two common variants available on the market, at least as automotive uses go. The most common ones are these two here. They are square shaped boxes, cubes. That would make sense, they are cubes and they are either four pin or five pin connections on them. The four pin version is only controllable for turning things on. The five pin version can actually both enable and disable the circuit depending on how you wire it. The simplest way to think about these relays is you have two completely separate circuits inside of one little box. A high amperage draw one and a low amperage one that controls the high amperage one. So to understand a little better about what's really going on inside of here, let's go ahead and open up this relay. Inside of here is a little electromagnet that is powered up on the low amperage side. That allows you to use a small amount of power to actuate this switch that then applies power to the large amperage circuit. This is great in EFI applications where these computers can't be putting out 30, 40 amps through a computer. They're delicate little electronics inside of there, but they can handle the one amp, maybe two amps that the control side of a relay needs. So your computer, your dash switch, your key switch in your car can apply power to the control side of this relay, that small amperage draw side. It'll apply power to it and go through the ground and that'll energize up the electromagnet that's inside of here. Right here, right now, I'm showing you what is actually happening inside of there. That coil of copper wire is the electromagnet. When power is applied to that electromagnet side, it switches that little contact switch on the high amperage side. This then allows that small circuit in your ECM, your switch on your dash to send that full 30 amps to your electric fan, your big A1000 Aeromotive fuel pump in the back of your car, whatever it is you're trying to control that's just too much of a load for your normal switches, your ECM to control. Let's look a little more at the anatomy of the inside of this relay. You might see on the back side here, we've got this large braided copper connection here. That is your high amperage draw circuit side. Then you have this spool of thin copper wire around this connecting center pole that creates your electromagnet. When power comes in, it travels around that copper wire and it actually creates a magnetic field that pulls the switch on the high amperage side into position. Again, with this one being a five terminal relay, this can either connect or disconnect circuits depending on which side you're wiring off of or to. Now this relay being a five pin relay, like I said, it can disable the circuit as well. The idea there is you have a normally open and a normally closed circuit inside of this relay. So you have power coming into it and you have two terminals that allow power to head out of the relay. One terminal is hot all the time. You don't need to power up the electromagnet inside this relay, power comes in and it goes out on that connection anytime. This does not need to be energized for that connection to work. The other circuit, however, needs this to be energized. So you need to flip that switch. You need to apply power to this thing to get it to move so that power heads out on the other circuit. Sometimes you might be in a situation where you just need to disable the circuit. You need something to turn a circuit off when something else happens. Maybe something like in a classic car, I would do it with AC. The AC compressors, the sanding compressors that a lot of us use on classic cars are not meant to spin 6,000 RPM, really crank out there when you're getting on it on the car. They don't like to spin that fast. So with one of these, I could wire the AC compressor control for the clutch through this relay. So anytime the relay isn't engaged, isn't actuated, then the AC compressor is free to function. But I could hook up maybe a wide open throttle switch or an RPM signal switch to this. So when I hit a certain RPM or I stomp the pedal and get wide open throttle, it would energize this relay and disconnect that circuit so my AC compressor could not be spinning because the clutch is disabled. So now let's go ahead and discuss actually wiring up a relay. I've got a little fan here. I'm actually going to wire up into a circuit and show you the operation of these relays but let's break it down for you. Most aftermarket relays actually come with a handy little wiring diagram printed onto them somewhere, top on this one, side on this one, and that actually shows you how you need to wire it, but you do have to kind of have a concept of what's going on on this diagram. It doesn't spell it out for you. That diagram on the relay actually has numbers on there that correspond to pins on the bottom of the relay. Most relays do have these pins labeled on the bottom, so they will tell you which pins are going to what part of the circuit, right here stamped into the bottom or cast into it in this case. So the terminals you have are 30, 85, 
86, 87, and 87A in the case of a five terminal relay. You won't have that in the case of a four terminal relay. So let's break down what these numbers are specifically for. Start off with number 30. Number 30 is your high amperage load side. That's your battery power. That comes direct from your battery to the relay. I do recommend putting fuses on there. Personally, I often use an inline fuse. You can pick up cheap little inline fuse holders a lot of places. You should go ahead and put a fuse in there for whatever circuit you need to be powering. So if you have a 20 amp fan you're powering up with this thing, put a 20 amp fuse in there, correspond and figure that out for yourself. Then continuing on the load side, we have 87. 87 is your power out of your relay. That is your switched circuit. That is what the relay is actually controlling. From 87, you go to whatever device you're trying to control. You can go ahead and power up your fan with it, your high beams or whatever circuit you're trying to switch with the relay. Now with terminals 85 and 86, your control side, you need one of those to go to ground. It doesn't actually matter which one goes to ground. One goes to ground and the other goes to a switched power source. Again, this is a low amperage circuit. Generally, these pull no more than like one, maybe two amps. So this is one scenario I've talked about in the past not using fuse taps, but you could get away with using a fuse tap to control a relay because it's such a small load. So what you need here is maybe you have a dash switch. You flip that switch and it sends 12 volts to the other side of the control circuit, maybe say here 85, and then 86 is going to ground. So when you apply power to this thing, you are controlling that control side of the circuit, energizing that electromagnet and connecting the connection on the load side. You can use that dash switch, you can use a key switch, you can just have it wired up so when you turn your key on on your car, your key hot circuits maybe in your fuse box with a fuse tap, or just right at the key switch when you're working with an aftermarket system, can send power to this relay. So maybe there's some circuit you want to come on, like your fuel pump. As soon as you turn the key on, you want that fuel pump to kick on, so you can wire it up that way for that circuit use. So here's a real world demonstration of using a relay. I've got a relay here that I'm gonna put into a socket and I've wired up a little wiring harness for that. I've got a old PC computer fan that I have set up here to plug into that harness. And then I have my power probe to act as my switch source for the relay. In this configuration here, the green wire sends power to the blue wire on the socket. That's the battery feed. The red wire is the battery power out to the fan once the relay is energized. Black wire on both the fan connector and the socket are providing ground to the relay and the fan here. And then the white wire is actually our control circuit to the relay. It's as simple as flipping the switch, energizing that electromagnet, and it sends power to the fan so the fan can operate. Just a quick note for you, I have continually referred to this as the high amperage side and the low amperage side of the circuits just to make it a little easier for you to understand. But really it's your control side and your load side. Your control side being the low amperage side and your load side being the high amperage side because it is capable of high amperage loads. However, it doesn't need to be a high amperage load. You could use that to provide good, clean, battery direct power to something like say an MSD ignition box. That ignition box isn't necessarily pulling 30 amps, I think they only pull 10, 15 amps at the most, but you could run that through this relay because they want good, clean, battery direct power to that box. But if you have some circuit like that where you don't really want to have it just directly connected to the battery, you're worried it might cause a parasitic draw on your vehicle, you could use this relay so it only actually sends power to that when you have your key on, something like that. So there's a lot of creative ways you can use this. Like I mentioned the AC compressor clutch, those don't pull a ton of power. So you can control with the load side of the circuit and the control circuits in here. You can control low amperage loads as well as high amperage loads. All right, folks, that is this deeper dive on relays. I hope I didn't lose you. It's a little complex, yet a simple topic at the same time. So maybe I complicated it for you. If I did, ask questions in the comments down below. We have a great community going here on the Hot Rod Hippie channel. Plenty of really knowledgeable folks are watching these videos right now that can answer your questions as well as myself, of course, answering questions for you. Feel free to ask them on any of my videos. I saw something at SEMA that really intrigued me, a new design of solid state relay setup. I talked to the people who make it for quite some time. I didn't do a video about it from the SEMA content because I wanna get my hands on it and show you folks it, it in operation. I've got some ideas brewing up here that I think I can do some neat stuff with that's new design, look out for that in the near future. Go ahead and drop this video a like if you found it interesting. Comment on the video, let me know what you're thinking, ask those questions, hit it up in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.